Hello, and welcome to the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. I'm Felicia Brown, and I'll be your host for this interview and series. This is one of several broadcasts with the presenters and experts who are appearing in Niagara Falls, Ontario, October 12th through 14th, 2012, and who are brought to you by One Concept. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the 2012 Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference sponsors, the Vitality Depot, Lackner McClellan Insurance, New York Chiropractic College, the Registered Massage Therapist Association of Ontario, Massage Therapy Canada and Canadian Chiropractor Magazine, Biotone, Massage Warehouse, Bon Vital, MPA Media, Family Massage Therapy, the DCCE, Performance Health, and Smile Dog Remote Reception Services for making this year's event possible. Our special guest today is James Waslowski. James and I will be talking about his four classes at the conference, Introduction to Orthopedic Massage, Orthopedic Massage for Complicated Forearm, Wrist, and Hand Conditions, Orthopedic Massage for Complicated Shoulder Conditions and Double Crush Phenomenon, and Pelvic Stabilization, the Key to Structural Integration, and Orthopedic Massage for Complicated Cervical Conditions, an all-new Elite Sports Therapy class. But first, let me tell you a little bit about James. James Waslowski is an author and international lecturer who teaches approximately 40 seminars per year around the globe. He served as the AMTA Sports Massage Chair and FSMTA Professional Relations Chair. He's developed seven orthopedic massage and sports injury DVDs and authored manuals on advanced orthopedic massage and client self-care. James is also a certified personal trainer with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. James presents at state, national, and international massage, chiropractic, and osteopathic conventions, including keynote addresses at the FSMTA, World of Wellness, New England Regional Conference, the World Massage Festival, and the Australian National Massage Convention. His audience includes massage and physical therapists, as well as athletic trainers, chiropractors, osteopaths, nurses, and physicians. James received the 1999 FSMTA International Achievement Award and was inducted into the 2008 Massage Therapy Hall of Fame. James, welcome to the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference pre-conference broadcast series. As always, I so appreciate you making time to talk with me about the event and your classes. Thanks, Felicia. I'm actually really excited, especially with the One Concept group. Um, after doing this similar conference in San Diego it, where we packed the house, I think this is going to be not only a coming together of elite education and, and quality um, teachers, but it's also almost like going back to family and, and friends, and there's a deep friendship. So I'm doubly uh, excited about the conference, spending time with the people from the One Concept group and sharing some great information with not only the the manual therapists in the field of massage, but the, the chiropractors, acupuncture people. So it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Well, it's truly our pleasure. Now, you mentioned some things about this conference being kind of like coming back to family and, and friends. It is definitely a special event. But beyond that, why do you recommend that massage and chiropractic practitioners attend events like the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference? I think the great thing about this particular format is um, when I wrote a book with Pearson Education, I, I really wanted to call it Integrated Manual Therapy. And I just returned from Australia where, where back in 1998 I had, I had taught at the Olympic Training Center. And what I loved about the concept back then, even in 1998, was that the, the chiropractor, the physical therapist, or the physio in their case, the osteopath, the massage therapist, the elite sports therapist, the sports psychologist, everybody was working together. And, and one of my greatest desires in the field of manual therapy is to bridge that gap between the physical therapist, the athletic trainer, the massage therapist. So, so it's, it makes it even more exciting when we see the branches of medicine coming together for the best interest of the patients. I totally agree with you, and this is a, a great venue to come to as well. Now, James, all of your classes are on orthopedic massage, and I know there's probably some people listening that don't know what that is. So can you begin uh, just by explaining what is orthopedic massage and how it compares to modalities such as medical massage or clinical massage or sports massage? Well, Felicia, when I took massage training in, in 1989, I had a lot of great therapists teach me, like neuromuscular by Paul St. John, active isolated stretching with Aaron Mattis. They were some of my 
original teachers. And what happened is I kept learning modality after modality, you know, Moscow alignment, posturology. And, and then there became a, a, a confusion. When do I do myofascial? When do I do trigger point work? When do I do uh, myoskeletal techniques? When do I uh, treat a fixated joint different than soft tissue imbalance? And so what I think of orthopedic massage, I really in my brochures, I describe it as a total system of assessments, special orthopedic testing, clinical reasoning, multidisciplinary and multimodality treatments with precise client self-care protocols and When you blend a lot of assessment, clinical reasoning, and blending of modalities, and then you teach the patients to take care of themselves by stretching tight muscles and toning and strengthening weak muscles, I think not only does it eliminate pain and align the skeletal system, but it optimizes to a large degree athletic performance. And So I interchangeably use the words medical massage, which orthopedic massage is a branch of, uh, clinical massage, because the new book that I that I wrote was called Clinical Massage Therapy, so that's an interchangeable term with, with orthopedic massage. And because my background is working with Olympic Olympic professional athletes for 20 years, uh, sports massage or clinical sports massage would be uh, a choice buzzword. So whether I call this medical massage, clinical massage, clinical sports massage, orthopedic massage, I think it's really more than just a modality. It's a total system of assessment treatment and then stretches and therapeutic exercises that eliminate pain and optimize performance potential. Thank you. That really helps um, define exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Now, James, what type of manual therapist would benefit by this work? Well, what's interesting, in the U.S., the primary market I cater to is the, uh, I would say, the intermediate and elite level massage therapists, those that want to sort of foolproof of their practice as far as economics and treat pain and injuries. But I think that when I go to Europe, the majority of my group are osteopaths, they're physiotherapists, which is equivalent to our physical therapists. Um, I'm getting, I I speak a number of times at the chiropractic conventions, the FCA in Florida, which is an elite chiropractic convention. So I think anybody that's doing manual therapy, personal trainers, um, chiropractors, osteopaths, or anybody that wants to do you know, in the spa setting, you're getting people coming in with minor muscular tendinous pain of their elbow, shoulder, back. So I really think it's applicable to anybody who's going to touch the human body to make a difference in quality of life. Now, you just mentioned working in the spa setting or working as a chiropractor. Can orthopedic massage really be easily implemented into a spa treatment or a chiropractic session? Yeah, a lot of the high-end spas have hired me. Canyon Ranch started the the process about eight years ago in Tucson and in Boston. And Canyon Ranch obviously is an elite-level treatment and pain management center where they talk about nutrition, they talk about you know uh, getting rid of pain, living healthy lifestyles, exercising, eating right. As a spin-off, are we still there? Yep, we're here. I'm sorry. As a spin-off in orthopedic massage, what what I like to see is. The spa therapist requests, um, or the person coming to the spa requests a relaxation massage, but they also go address my shoulder, address my elbow, address my lower extremity. All of my work is absolutely pain-free, so it can be easily implemented into that spa environment where you're actually making a difference in in their quality of life while giving them that relaxation massage. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like it could be a great addition to really any any provider's uh, repertoire. Now, with that in mind, why will therapists make their practice recession proof with the addition of this kind of training? Well, our society is so prone to postural imbalances and structural, you know, lay length discrepancies and working on computers and repetitive stress syndromes that people are always going to seek out a therapist that can get them out of pain. In, in fact, in a spa setting, what I think is you'll see is the average uh consumer will probably pick a female therapist to get a relaxation massage, especially the male market. But if they have pain, they're going to say, who do you who do you have in this environment that can address my back, my shoulder, my neck, my lower extremity, my knee? Um, in, when I go to Europe and you go to, into a spa in Europe, you're actually going into the healthcare center and orthopedic massage is on the menu now because of what we've done at the University of Dublin and teachings around, around the world. We've actually got orthopedic massage on the menu, meaning they'll say if you have the following musculoskeletal pain conditions, you might want to choose these therapists. Here's our list of elite, elite sports or, or elite therapists that do orthopedic massage. So I think what it does is in a tough economic time, we're seeing 
some of my people that are certified are, are booked six months out, and no matter what the market does, they're still booked at, at $100 an hour or $150 an hour six months out and wait, and a waiting list. So, so I think as far as recession-proofing your practice, when you can get people out of pain and when you can take athletes that just competed in London and give them that cutting-edge difference in performance potential, you'll be a pretty busy, busy therapist. No doubt. Well, providing the results and, and having a modality that sets you apart um, definitely sound like they contribute to that recession-proof factor. So now, James, you're teaching four, count them, four different classes <laughs> at the conference. You're going to be a very busy man. Um, would you please give us a brief overview of each of the classes? Why don't we just start with the introduction to orthopedic massage? In introduction to orthopedic massage, my real goal in this hour is to take people that have real conditions, a frozen shoulder, you know, SI joint pain, and, and actually show them how we assess, how we do clinical reasoning, how we treat, how we blend modalities, and how we teach them exercises. So in the, in the intro, what you'll be seeing is the participants will get an opportunity to see someone with 10 or 15 years of back pain or someone with 10 or 15 years of frozen shoulder, uh, real patients getting real results by, by a, what I call the dance moving between muscular imbalance, capsular adhesions, emotional guarding, and so on. So you're going to see a real overview of what is orthopedic massage, why is it more than just a modality, how does it blend multiple modalities, and, and, and really the other thing you're going to see is why is it so important that, that the client do stretches and therapeutic exercises to maintain the outcomes of the manual therapy situation. Excellent. So in a sense it's giving them an idea of what to expect in some of your longer classes. So, yes, exactly. So let's look at, at the next one then, orthopedic massage for complicated forearm, wrist, and hand conditions. Well, what they're going to get in that class is really uh, primarily, uh, I, I produced a brand new DVD called Multiple Crush Phenomena for Forearm, Wrist, and Hand Conditions. And the reason I did it is one of my good friends in Boston had carpal tunnel surgery of his wrist, and he got actually worse than they cut into the elbow near the median nerve. He got worse, and we showed him some nerve tests for the neck, shoulder, to look at, you know, impingements of the cervical nerve roots, impingements in the scalenes and pec minor before it ever becomes a forearm wrist and hand problem. So we'll look at everything of the forearm wrist and hand. Uh, we'll do a lot of assessments. We'll look at things like carpal tunnel, the wrist and elbow portion of the nerve problems. We'll sort out the, uh, the difference between tendinosis and tendinitis and how to resolve the tendon pain of the elbow in things like golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. We'll look at things like Decorvent's tenosynovitis, which I would say 25% of manual therapists have pain if they if they do the, the Fingelstons test. They have pain near the styloid process of their radial bone. We'll show them how to eliminate that. Um, we'll get into a lot of detailed uh, conditions where there's distension of tendons of the hands, trigger finger, a lot of different formers and hand conditions that can't just can't be sorted out by simply doing petrissage, effleurage, and basic massage strokes. So a lot of assessment. A lot of um, blending of modalities, again, you know, active myofascial techniques based on work of, like Tom Myers to release the flexor retinaculum of the wrist. And it'll be a pretty dynamic uh, format of forearm wrist and hand conditions, eliminating that. Sounds like something good to take for client and patient applications as well as some self-care exactly. for all of us manual who, who therapists. Needs it worse, who needs it more than the manual therapist? Good forearm wrist and hand work, yeah. Okay, and so then um, the third class you're teaching is orthopedic massage for complicated shoulder conditions and double crush phenomenon, uh, pelvic st stabilization, the key to structural integration. So I take it this is a two-part class or two-section class. Yeah, Felicia, we're spending four hours on each component, and my greatest passion is shoulder work. Um, we're doing a thing at the University of Minnesota in March, and what we're doing is we're dissecting uh, a frozen shoulder. We're looking, a neurologist is going to work with me with a pathologist, and the neurologist is going to sort out all the nerve uh, impingements between the neck and throughout the shoulder. Then the pathologist is going to dissect the neck and shoulder so that we can look at the inner fascia, the joint capsule. We can look at all the nerve compression formats. And what I'm hoping uh, is that we will rewrite the text of modern medicine, of, of I would say traditional medicine, make it modern medicine. So when we get into the shoulder work, we're going to be looking at um, some pretty powerful 3D dimensional movements of the shoulder. Uh, we'll be looking at that. And then with pelvic stave, I'm blending some of the work of Paul St. John's posturology with some of the work of Dr. Dalton's Moscow alignment to get rid of things like sacral torsions, SI joint pain, bulging discs, 
We're going to look at ascending syndromes, how instability of the pelvis affects scoliotic patterns of the spine. And then we're going to try to tie it together. Why is a lot of the shoulder pain causing neck symptoms? Why is a lot of the pelvic instability causing shoulder pain? And, you know, we'll even tie in some on the next day with some of Tom Meyer's anatomy trains to kind of link this all together. But for the shoulder, we'll get into thoracic outlet. We'll get into... Uh, We'll get into adhesive capsulitis and, and impingements of shoulders, and we'll get into rotator cuff injuries. Um, I just had a gentleman that was scheduled for surgery for his rotator cuff repair, um, and in 20 minutes he was pain-free by balancing out the muscles and treating the scar tissue and bringing everything into balance. So greatest passion for me is, is frozen shoulders, thoracic outlet, and I really think that now that I'm integrating with the neurologist and the chiropractors and I'm integrating this with the pathologist with the dissections that some of what I'm going to share is going to challenge the current education writings and medical textbooks. How exciting. It, it just sounds phenomenal, especially with being able to go in with the 3D part and see what's really going on in that frozen shoulder. Yeah. Uh, your fourth class, James, is orthopedic massage for complicated cervical cervical conditions along with elite sports therapy. Um, what's that going to be like? Again, Felicia, a two-part class, four hours each. I, I never do cervical uh, work without doing the superficial front line, lengthening the rectus abdominal muscles and through the sternalis and the SCM. So we'll be reviewing some of the brilliant uh, anatomy trains work of Tom Myers. And then we'll, in the neck, we'll be sorting out, you know, do they have a shearing force at C1, C2? Do we need to uh, facilitate opening and closing of the facet joints? Uh, how do we address the role of, of the spurling test for cervical nerve compressions, the adsense test for scaling nerve compressions in the neck that is affecting that thoracic outlet carpal tunnel patient? And this is where I really think um, I'm going to really push the chiropractors to come to the shoulder and neck class because I think it's going to take um, one of my chiropractic friends in New York, Dr. Wilcox, said that it's taken his practice to a whole new level when he integrated orthopedic massage into his chiropractic uh, business because now we're addressing the muscles that pull the bones onto these nerves and blood vessels. We're doing neurological tests to sort out nerve compressions in the neck versus the shoulder. Uh, we're, we're doing things that make chiropractic f more effective or sometimes not even necessary as we facilitate uh, with Dr. Dalton's work and Paul St. John's work. We're going to move that C1, C2. We're going to open and close those facet joints with with the integration of soft tissue balancing techniques. So I'm not teaching any manipulative therapy, but I am certainly teaching how to make manipulative therapy more effective, less aggressive, and longer lasting. So it's going to be a nice way to bridge that that market between the chiropractor and the massage therapist. And then you talked about the elite sports therapy class. That probably is the hottest class right now that I'm teaching on in the in the market today. Uh, people like Benny Vaughn, Carol Kresge, you know, a lot of the people, Jack Marr, are no longer on the circuit teaching elite sports therapy. So to me, elite sports therapy is going to be how do we do postural movement analysis? How do we, how do we break down motions of muscles that should fire in a certain order? Like if the, if the psoas is tight, the glutes are inhibited, why is an athlete getting injured from synergistic dominance of the hamstrings and the erector spinae firing? And how do we reorganize those muscles to fire properly? How do we tweak little things like rotation in your knee or a hyperpronated foot that then ascends into your back and spine and neck? And how do we read the map for these athletes? Um, I'm going to share some work that I've done at the triathlon in Hawaii. I'm going to be looking at, you know, integrated manual therapy within competition. You know, we'll look at techniques that affect competition before performance, after performance. Um, it's way beyond your basic pre- and post-event massage training. It's about what athletes need as we work with the athletic trainer, the physical therapist, the osteopath, the chiropractor, you know, and the sports medicine physicians. So it's how do we build a team? How do we build an A team to best not only influence the athlete's performance and eliminate or rehabilitate their injuries, but how do we build an A team to work together cohesively in the field of man manual therapy. So I think this is going to be one of the most exciting classes uh, at the convention. That sounds exciting, especially coming right off the tails of the Olympics here. And I know there yeah. are plenty of people that may, like myself, that are highly competitive. We might not be elite athletes, but we might think of ourselves as that type. There are even plenty of people that are uh, able to invest in having a trainer and a coach and a you know, a massage therapist and a chiropractor that are all helping for that optimal performance. So it's not just the Olympic level athletes. There's plenty of others that um, probably put themselves in that category and could benefit from that type of work. Yeah. And, and 
Felicia, what was really neat is I got a call from someone that won a gold medal in cycling at the Olympics, and the female uh, athlete said to me, she goes, it was so great that, that the therapist that worked on me in, in the United States that you trained was doing the same work as the therapist that worked on me in Ireland as the, and doing the same thing of a therapist you trained in New Zealand. And I really just want to say thank you for raising the bar in the field of sports therapy to, to this level of elite sports therapist. So, it, so when I hear that from the Olympic athletes calling me someone I don't even know, we know we're doing something right to raise the bar in sports training. That's awesome. Congratulations on getting that verification of, of your work and, and how valid it is. You're welcome. So now, James, I hear there's going to be a unique twist at this year's confer- uh, conference, stressing the importance of blending spiritual, emotional, energetic, and physical healing with the active participation of the client throughout the therapy. Can you talk a little bit more about this actually research-based information? Yeah, Felicia, I've been, um, I'm, people don't know this about me, but I am a really high intense intuitive therapist. So when I wrote the book Clinical Massage Therapist, it was the hardest task of my life. I'm trying to explain how I intuitively release a frozen shoulder, how I do the, do the dance between emotional guarding, the breath, the energy that I feel coming from the patient. And so I've kind of kept this until I prove myself as a scientist. I've kind of kept this kind of, um, Low key. Uh-huh. But then I was reading Dr. Dalton's book on on in dynamic body, and I and I want to quote this. It's by Dr. Laura Mar Mosley, professor of neurosciences, and it's a groundbreaking study. And what they said is the effectiveness of body work treatments depends on cortical attention of the patient. If the patients were asked to accompany each touch with detailed attention with a perceptual discrimination task, the treatment was highly effective. Same patient. The exact same type of mechanostimulation showed zero effectiveness when the patients were allowed to read the newspaper and not required to give detailed attention to each stimulation, meaning each time we touch the tissue, treat the scar tissue, treat that ligament. And basically what it's saying is that the nervous system controls the fascial system. So what we do, and I'm going to use uh, one of my wounded warriors that I've worked on recently. Chaz had every injury you can imagine in his neck and shoulder, but as I was resetting C1, I'm saying, Chaz, do you feel it sliding to the right? And he goes, yes. Chaz, you feel me opening the fist set joints? Now the nerves are decompressing. He says, yes. You feel me releasing the pec minor and, and softening that scar and creating a healthy scar? Yes. Long story short, Chaz was on morphine pump for two years, moves his arm. He, we've resolved his frozen shoulder. He's had no numbness in his arm, and that was about a two-hour session, but because he processed every single move and technique, I believe that the cells can, the thoughts can change the level of the cells to the level of changing the DNA. And I've got research that'll talk about the power of visualization, the power of intention, the power of why someone heals more effectively when in the hands of a competent therapist that explains the techniques being processed and why the critical role off of this also, Felicia, is I'm really adamant about the patient doing neuromuscular re-education. I'm adamant about the patient doing stretches and therapeutic exercises, reinforcing therapy. And that's why I became a personal trainer, as I can do what's the job that was started on the table. But I'm an advocate, if you're getting injury and pain management, that the power of intention, the power of thought, the power of visualization, and the power of explanation during therapy, can, I believe, can enhance that therapeutic session maybe 60%. So we're going to be sharing some of that as we go through each and every class and how powerful this can be by bringing in the energy field into the into the structural postural field. You know, we're treating a spiritual, emotional, physical being, and if we just do techniques and become a technique junkie, honestly, what I'm I almost feel like a hypocrite. What I'm teaching structurally and posturally is such a small percentage of what can happen if the patient is empowered to participate. And I'll just finish that by it says, how long do the session changes last? Depends a large degree on how much the client owns or embodies the recently gained relationships with his or her own internal body schema and psychological body image, meaning the belief system of the patient and the confidence they have in your therapist plays a huge role on the outcomes of the techniques we'll be learning in this entire workshop series. Well, I have to tell you that there's another presenter that I interviewed for this series, Dr. Lisa Bloom, and her our, her whole presentation is on that very thing about how the intention and the expectation of a patient um, and the belief system actually affects the treatment of the outcome of what can happen. And so there's clearly a lot of validity to that the research that you've brought up, that she's brought up, and anyone that wants to look at that particular part of things more in depth might peek into her class too. But it's it's so exciting. 
to right. to see that coming through from you, someone who people think of as a technician in terms of your training, you're teaching all of the, as you said, the mechanical uh steps and systems and so forth, and now you, coming out from hiding in a sense, talking about the very thing that, that she was talking about as a researcher uh, and doctor at the Chiropractic College in New York. It's awesome. When I was in Ireland, honestly, I, I was teaching the, the brother and sister team that teach at the University of Dublin in massage, and I told the energy worker that I would rather teach her techniques and then just let her tap into the presence during therapy then I would rather teach the technique junkie how to quiet the mind and then tap into the energy of the patient. So, so, so I've come from the other way around, but people don't know that because I'm such a scientifically based technician. But I believe that something that I have always done brings the work to a higher level based on expectations and intention, coming with love and compassion and bringing something different to that energy world that stimulates a more effective outcome of the structural postural world. So I'm excited about sharing all this stuff. Well, it'll be nice to, to hear about that side of you. I'm glad to get a little um, preview of that. Now, in the past, you and I have discussed the rumor that uh, you and Whitney Lowe have been talking about creating a master certification in orthopedic massage by combining both of your certifications. What can you tell us about that? About a year ago, Whitney had approached me to see if we, if we would be interested because uh, Whitney does – probably the best in the world in the field of, of assessment, clinical reasoning, you know, determining different types of pathologies, matching the appropriate technique to the appropriately un- underlying physiology of each and every condition based on assessment and clinical reasoning. And I've been blessed to train with some of the greatest hands-on practitioners in the world, Eric Dalton, Tom Myers, posturology, neuromuscular, myofascial. And so what we decided is that if we blended his online um or his hands-on uh, certification in, in high-end assessment, clinical reasoning, pathology, and, and treatments with what I teach on blending of modalities and then taking it into the world of exercising, stretching tight muscles, toning and strengthening weak muscles, that we would literally raise the bar in the field of orthopedic medicine. So here are two world-renowned educators wanting to blend the best of two worlds to, to just take it another notch up. And Basically, it just boils down to that they can take Whitney's certification and my certification, then we will jointly issue a master certification in orthopedic massage. And we think it's going to change a lot of people's lives that we're bringing our expertise together. Fantastic. Now, you've talked about your new book uh, through Pearson Publishing. Uh, it was recently pu- recently released, and it's called Clinical Massage Therapy, A Structural Approach to Pain Management. Tell us about how that's changed the way you teach. Felicia, when you write a book and you get about 27 reviewers, and, and there, these reviewers are PTs, chiropractors, and the, and the highest degree of educators in our industry, meaning they're my peers, people, people like Judy Walker. When you write an article, you're open to peer review. So, so for six years, I, w- I had about maybe, I would say, a thousand learning transitions. That means a thousand times where I literally had to learn differently what I used to think was going on with the frozen shoulder, what I used to think was the best approach to tendon pain. I will say that that six years in investment in writing this clinical massage book based on peer review, making me be on the A team and raise my, raise my own bar hundreds of times, um, has made me almost like I went back to did my thesis in body work. And it certainly has made me a better practitioner. It has made me more humble as I stay open to peer review it has allowed me to teach at a doctoral level. I could I could talk, talk with any doctor, any physician, any chiropractor now, and be able to talk their game. So so that was probably the hardest thing I've done in my life. And yet, and the and the great thing that the people at the workshop are going to see is we made PowerPoint. I said to my colleagues, what if you could look inside of the human body when you're doing the interfascial work or the capsule work or looking at the scar tissue in the body? And their 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 joke to me six years ago when I started writing is, are you going to hire Spielberg? Well, I have to say that Pearson took images, pathologies, laid them into the human body throughout the book so that you can see inside of the human body every time you're touching the tissue. And what that's going to do is when I run two screens in my multimedia presentations at the conference, you'll be looking in the human body on one screen with PowerPoint slides from the textbook, and then you'll be seeing the technique performed on another screen. So we beautifully cater to the kinesthetic visual auditory learning styles. Uh, one of my greatest compliments is when a, when a really, really uh, – Someone that has struggles with learning things, say someone that's dyslexic will say, you catered to me. You you blended it so beautiful with the high-tech 
presentation that you cater to the visual kinesthetic learning. And that's what we need to do is we need to take this doctoral information that's in this text, simplify it, modify it, and make it easy to follow. Well, I've heard wonderful things about the book. And, of course, your courses are well-renowned, full to the gills almost every time you teach them. And plenty of people are going to want to be um, involved in them at the conference. For people who want to learn more now or who want to purchase your book, um, how can they find out about that? Do you have some contact information you can share? Yes, Felicia. We have a uh, full-time staff, and you can go to two options. One is our website, which is www.orthomassage.net. That's www.orthomassage.net. Or you can just simply call our staff at 1-800-643-5543. We have brand new DVDs we've just produced that look into multiple crush phenomena and ascending and descending syndromes. These do cater to all manual therapists, not just the massage industry. You know, we've got workbooks, manuals. We've got everything that that, that can make a, them a better therapist available online or through our toll-free number. Fantastic. Well, I know that everyone listening is intrigued and is going to be interested in registering for one or more of your classes on orthopedic massage. James, thank you as always for taking time to talk with us about the event, about what you're going to be teaching, and of course just for being a part of the 2012 Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference. We're thrilled to have you back again this year. Thanks, Felicia. I'm really looking forward to the family of friends I've developed with this organization. It's probably my favorite convention. And from there, I'm off to another convention in New Jersey. But but it, it's always an honor and a privilege to be able to share the great work of my teachers and colleagues. Thank you. Thank you again. And now, James, I'm going to transition and let everybody know exactly how they can be involved in the conference. Uh, the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference is one of the largest exhibitions of massage and chiropractic products continuing education, and business opportunities for practitioners of both disciplines. The registration cost for the conference is just $68 and includes access to the trade hall floor for all three days, which houses over 100 vendor booths and tables, access to all the free one-hour presentations, that's including James's free one-hour presentation on orthopedic massage, these are for chiropractic and massage, of course, and a uh, one lunch voucher to be used during the conference. Attendees may also choose to add workshops and full-day classes, such as James's, for uh, the experience and participate in raffles and giveaways of literally thousands of dollars in prizes. On Sunday, October 14th, we're also offering free admission to registered students. Students will be greeted at 10 a.m. at our Smart from the Start seminar featuring top presenters in our industries who will be talking about the growth opportunities and struggles that both industries may encounter. This is real-life education about what to expect after graduation and some topics that never get covered in school. All of this is happening at the beautiful Sheraton on the Falls Conference Center and Casino. Room rates are just $139 to $179 a night, up to four people a room. But space is limited, so make your reservations now. Also, Annex Publishing is printing the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Event Program in the uh pardon me, in Massage Therapy Canada and Canadian Chiropractor magazines. These will be given out at the conference and distributed throughout Canada to their magazine subscribers. So if you are a vendor or educator that's listening in today and would like to get some great exposure for your class or product, please contact Christine Livingstone at Annex Publishing. Now if you're ready to register for the 2012 Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference in Niagara Falls and of course to meet James Waslowski, myself, and the other amazing instructors, there are now two ways to do so. First, you may register online and pick your courses instantly on the official conference websites, CanadianMassageConference.com or CanadianChiropracticConference.com, depending on your discipline. You may also register by phone. The call is free, and operators are waiting to speak with you at 877-681-5578. That's 877-681-5578. We also invite you to stay connected with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Canadian Massage Conference and forward slash Canadian Chiropractic Conference. Again, the 2012 Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference is made possible by all of our wonderful sponsors. Thank you so much to the Vitality Depot, Lackner McClellan Insurance, New York Chiropractic College, 
the Registered Massage Therapist Association of Ontario, Massage Therapy Canada and Canadian Chiropractor Magazine, Biotone, Massage Warehouse, Bon Vital, MPA Media, Family Massage Therapy, the DCCE, Performance Health, and Smile Dog Remote Reception Services. This is Felicia Brown, and on behalf of everyone from the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference and One Concept Radio, I want to thank you for listening to this edition of the pre-conference broadcast series. Please remember to watch for more interviews between now and October 14th, and to visit our websites and Facebook pages for replays of all the interviews in this series. We look forward to seeing you in Niagara Falls in October. Please also consider joining us for the 2013 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conferences, May 17th through 19th in in Atlanta, Georgia, and September 13th through 15th in San Diego, California. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a fabulous day.